Hey, what's up guys? So I had some boot issues and luckily I was able to recover my system back to working conditions fairly easily and I'll tell you how. But first I need to give an extra special thank you to Carlos Sotulo, who's my first slash bin level patron. Thank you so much, Carlos, for contributing to my channel, which in turn helps me contribute to the Linux community. So I installed Solus on my main machine, which is the one you're looking at now. And unfortunately, Solus had overwritten the Manjaro EFI bootloader. Solus wouldn't start at all after the login screen, but that's another issue. The UEFI system works well. I understand how it works, and if you leave it alone, you shouldn't have any problems. Troubleshooting it, though, could be a pain since there's still some technical things I don't know. I've run into EFI problems before, and just running a live USB to restore the Grub EFI loader worked before. However, this time, the Solus bootloader just would not go away. I even deleted the Solus partition completely. I tried booting from a live USB and chrooted into my Manjaro install to reinstall Grub. That didn't work. I used a live USB to find the EFI loader for Manjaro, which was still there. In fact, there's tons of EFI entries that the live USB could find, but didn't show up in my BIOS settings. So I booted into it that way and again tried to reinstall Grub. Nothing. I used EFI Boot Manager to investigate and delete any loaders that I didn't need anymore. And I even deleted the files directly out of the boot slash EFI folders, which I can show you here. If you go to your root boot EFI, I went through all of these and deleted a bunch of stuff out of here as well. At this point, my BIOS only showed three options for the UEFI bootloaders, Windows, Ubuntu, and UEFI OS. The UEFI OS was still somehow soulless instead of going back to Manjaro. Apparently the soulless bootloader is indestructible. My last resort was to restore the system using Timeshift. This was the first time I did a full system restore with it, so I was a little nervous. I booted off of the live USB and used it to boot the Manjaro EFI, and then I fired up Timeshift. Checking to see when I installed Solus and what restore points I had available, I was able to pick one that would do the trick. I just clicked the appropriate snapshot and clicked Restore. You're presented with this window that asks you where you want to restore to. This is especially handy if you can't get into your system at all, because you can boot from a live USB and run time shift from that live environment. Just ensure that if you're fixing a boot issue, you have the slash boot slash EFI set to the proper partition. Because I'm booted into Manjaro and not a live session, I only had to make sure the root was pointed to the proper location, as well as the slash boot slash EFI location. In the bootloader options, I ensured that it was set to reinstall Grub on the right partition and then update the Grub menu. It will then do a dry run. This is just a test. Nothing is actually happening to your drive right now, and you'll have a final confirmation after this. Now you're at the confirmation point. This screen lets you see all of the files that will be changed, created, or deleted. Once you hit next, you get a warning and a disclaimer, which for some reason is blank. I assume that some distros or versions might actually have information here, but for me, it was just like this. Clicking next is now the point of no return. This is your last chance to hit cancel. Then it changes to a full screen text output of the process as it happens. Of course, doing this means that any applications you've installed since that snapshot will now be gone. Likewise, anything you've uninstalled after the snapshot will be reinstalled. No big deal, really. One thing to note with Timeshift is that your home folder is excluded from backups and restores. So all the files in your home folder, such as documents, music, videos, and even all your program settings will remain untouched. This means that if you plan to restore home folder documents, this won't work, but I will show you how you can include it before the end of the video. With that in mind, since all application settings are stored in your home folder, they will remain there when you reinstall the program. In my example, I had to reinstall Krita, which was pretty easy, and all the settings that I had changed before remained, so I didn't have to change the settings again. Once this process finishes, your computer will automatically reboot. For me, I went into the BIOS settings to ensure that the EFI OS bootloader was still set to be the first boot device in the order. After doing this, the Manjaro bootloader came back and all was good again. The only downside was that I lost two programs that I had installed and I had 305 updates that needed to be done. These were all the updates that were removed during the rollback to the older snapshot, and this is completely normal. 
So I'm quite happy with how it all turned out, and I hope that if you end up in a similar situation, you can use this video as a reference for restoring your system. I did another complete video on just backups as well, and I'll put a link in the description so you might be interested in having a look at that as well. As for what happened here, EFI bootloaders being overwritten is common. For example, I had Ubuntu 16.04 and 18.04 installed, which shared a single bootloader. When I installed Elementary, it too overwrote the Ubuntu bootloader, since it is Ubuntu based. So when I choose the Ubuntu bootloader when I'm starting up my system, I get the Elementary Grub screen, which still has all my distros on it. As for saving your home folder with TimeShift, it's pretty simple. Open up TimeShift and it'll ask you for your administrator password. Go to Settings, move this here, and then Users. And here you have just a few options. Ignore the root user, he has no files. But you can see your username, which by default is set to exclude all. You can change it to include hidden. This will only back up and restore your hidden user settings and applications that are in your home folder. Let me just open up the home folder really quick here. So everything that starts with a dot. I talk about this uh, more in the backups video that I did before. So all these that include your settings, your config, and for all your applications, all that stuff will be backed up and restored if you say include hidden. This won't, however, back up and restore your documents, downloads, pictures, and so on. This will only include your hidden files and folders. On the flip side, you could say include all. This will include all your documents, all your settings, everything that's in your folder. We can have a look here at the filters tab to see how it behaves. So you can see here with the negative and positive, it is saying that it excludes negative everything in root, root slash star star. And because I said include all for Dorian, it is under the plus include Dorian slash star star. Now if we go back here and say only hidden, go back to filters, now it's Dorian slash dot star star, as in every, anything that's hidden, anything that starts with a dot. So let me just put that back to exclude. Now also here you can add your own individual files, you can add folders to include or exclude and completely customize how your backup works. I hope this video helped you learn how to restore your system, or at the very least give you an idea of what to do if things go wrong, like what happened to me. If you liked the video, please click like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips, how-tos, and how I fix some of my mishaps and blunders. I also encourage you to share them with others on your social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and whatever else you kids are using these days. I want to give a special thank you to my patrons for helping me bring content to the Linux community. Carlos, Carl, George, Matt, Kit, and Sez. Thank you so much guys for your contributions. If you would like to contribute to my channel, click on the Patreon link in the screen or in the description. I also have a PayPal link for one-time donations. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bash on.